Hey team, welcome to the Step Outside YouTube channel. If you want to see more fishing action just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Australians love the outdoors. It has that adventurous feeling to it as soon as you step outside. And rock fishing is one of those adventures that many enjoy. It conjures up the thoughts of deep water, big fish, with that element of danger. To combine these safely involves a level of skill, and one of those skills is knowing the right way to cast. For if you can stay a safe distance away from the water, but still get your lure or bait to the awaiting fish, then your chances of getting washed off the rocks or slipping down into the salty brine can be minimised. There are many ways of casting a rod, and who is to say what is the right way and what is the wrong way? As long as you're comfortable and the line is getting out to where the fish are, then I feel you're doing it the right way. For me to get that extra distance to reach those fish busting the surface, and quite often just out of reach, is by using a long distance cast. With the right outfit and lure, you can obtain a distance of more than 100 metres. One way to get that long distance cast going off the rocks is by using a rod with a minimum length of 10 feet. If you're right-handed, place your right hand a couple of feet in front of the reel. Your left hand cradles the reel seat with the line cocked onto your index finger ready to be released. Your lure should be dangling around 4 feet from the rod tip. Step back and then step forward, punching your right hand in the direction you're casting and release the line from your index finger. Bring the rod down along the left hand side of your body under your left arm and keep that rod tip up at a 45 degree angle. From there, watch it fly. Another way is lowering everything down towards the butt of the rod. Your right hand now cradles the reel seat and the line is cocked onto the index finger. The left hand slides further down to the butt and repeat the action. Step back cast out again with a punching motion. G'day everybody, it's pretty hard to go past a view like this if I must say so myself and today we are going to treat you to whiting fishing off the beach. Whiting are caught all around the country, it's a staple bread and butter fish that we get, whiting, brim, flathead, the three majors. Now if I'm coming to a beach I'm not going to use river prawns, river prawns I would, I would use that in the river because that's where the whiting are going to be eating in the river, they're going to be going to those corners, the holes and looking for the prawns schooling up. On the beach I want to do something a bit different. I want to use a bait found right at my feet. So, cockles, ugaries, pippies, and beach worms. I've done a few tips on how to catch beach worms in the show before, but it's such a great bait. And if they're here and in good numbers, then you only need one or two to catch a bucket of fish. Let's go whiting fishing. To catch our whiting bait, we need something smelly to entice the beach worms to the surface of the sand. They need to stick their head out so I can spot them. It'll make life a lot easier. The mullet I'm using is soft and it's a bit on the nose. The holes in the scaler bag will allow the fish to stay with me but also allow the fish smell to escape with the current. Next thing I want to do is release all of that stench out and by cutting it open with the use of a knife, it'll be enough to get the juices flowing. Making small slices across the fillet will cut through all the veins and arteries, again allowing that smell to escape. After cutting a tidbit off, something for the worm to grab hold to, it's off 
to the water's edge. Waving the stinky across the water's surface in around ankle deep water will allow the smell to spread like wildfire through the water and cover a vast area, therefore giving you the better chance of attracting more worms to that area. When they pop their head up, give them a bit of that tidbit you cut off and grab them with your index finger and thumb. It can take a while to master this, but after a while you'll get the hang of it. You can use tools like long nose pliers or worm pliers, not side cutters or tweezers, won't get you anywhere. But learning to use your fingers gives you the best feeling when you're catching your own bait. That is a beautiful bait. A fresh beach worm right at your feet and the fish out there are going to love it. So what I'm doing here, I've got my beach worm I'm going to just insert it on that long shank hook. So I'm using a number four long shank hook. And I want to get that hook staying in the worm if I can. So go right down to the shank. You want to take about an inch off in front of the actual barb. So that way in the water, that little piece there will still move around. One thing I learned about when I was a kid targeting whiting is that if you don't catch them straight away is to move, okay? They're not here, go 20 feet down, 20 feet down, 20 feet down, until you find the school. If you stay stationary in one spot, well, unfortunately, you're not gonna do too good. Let's move down the beach further. There you have it, a beautiful yellowfin whiting. They're a little bit smaller than the King George whiting found in the bottom end of the country, but absolutely brilliant tasting, very sweet fish. And this is the yellowfin whiting, you can see by the yellow fins around his uh, tail and his pectorals. What he's done, he's actually swallowed the hook. I want to get in close and show you how to take the hook out of the fish without cutting the line and retying on. Have a look at this. So what it's called is split the lip, okay? So all you do here is you put your thumb underneath his jaw, split that lip open, and then pull the line down. The hook will then sort of come out a bit. I'm taking this fish home for dinner. Here's a beautiful fish. And the hook will come out, you also get your bait. Let's talk terminal tackle. The sinker, size three ball. You don't want to go too heavy or light, depending on the current running. Swivel, size eight or 10, nothing too big. Line class, you want to keep it light, around eight to 10 pound maximum. Hook, size four or six, red long shank, chemically sharpened. The rod, 10 foot six, nice and whippy. Shimano Katana, hard to go past. The foregrip, plenty of grip there when you're pulling that fish in. The real size I like to use, I've gone a little bit bigger here. You can go 4,000, but I've opted for the 6,000, so I can flick a lure around if I like. And the beauty of this outfit, it's a two-piece. Hey team, thanks for watching the Step Outside YouTube channel. If you want to see more fishing action like this, remember to like, comment, add, subscribe. Keep up to date with what's happening in your neck of the woods and our neck of the woods. It's going to be great viewing, great watching. It's all coming up on the Step Outside YouTube channel. Take it easy.